morning. You tell him to explain about last night. Because if she did, you must understand it was all an accident, so it's pointless sitting there in a black off. What did she say then? I'm not talking to you. Well, you might as well. It's going to be a long wait. There's a broken collarbone in there at the moment. And there's this gentleman. Well, I shan't be long. Well, you never know, do you? Might be worse than you think. <laughs> you love to me. Well, I've only come for the wife's prescription. <laughs> oh, well, it'll still take an age. Look, Bob, talking to me is better than a 1967 edition of Autocar. Did she explain? Thelma is not speaking to me. Thelma is having a nervous breakdown. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll have Ernie in a minute, then. <laughs> when she arrives, you fancy making number four for Solo? If it wasn't for this bad hand, I'd smash your face in. If it wasn't for mine, I'd smash yours back. I offered you my hospitality. I offered you my house because I felt sorry for you. I even came up there this morning to make you breakfast. I bought you some eggs, large brown organic eggs. I get there and you're in bed with my fiance. Didn't I? I use your noddle, man. It's obvious what happened. Thelma came to stay at the house, saw I was asleep and thought I was you. Didn't want to wake me up, wake you up. So she got in beside me and went to sleep herself. Not noticing I lost two stone during the day. Where'd I be? <laughs> now look, Bob, I am the last person that. <laughs> I am the last person in the world that Thelma would want to cuddle up to. That's why she's having a nervous breakdown. Not because you found out she was in bed with me. Because she found out she was in bed with me. <laughs> now, I'm right, aren't I? I don't know. I swear it, honestly, hope to die. N nothing happened? Not so much as a nudge. How's your hand? I think the finger's broken. No, it isn't. Not if you can wiggle it about like that. Well, it's very sore. And so is mine. You better get that hatch of yours seen to. Mind you, the main reason I'm here this morning is to get some malaria pills. <laughs> you can't have malaria. From the services. I was two years in the Mediterranean, you know. I'd have thought you'd have webbed feet, not malaria. <laughs> Not really having a nervous breakdown, is she? Well, she's very upset. I'll have to go round there and make it up. Again. Ah, <laughs> oh, they're funny women, aren't they? If it's not one thing, it's the other. Usually the other. <laughs> I seem to have been through so many hang-ups since you got back. Oh, I'll have to go away. That's the, it's the only answer. I'll have to emigrate. Oh, it's not you, mate. Not really. Well, I'm glad you appreciate that. Well, I can see her point. I mean, I do understand. I mean, you do represent a threat. You're the past. You're what we used to be, the lads, knocking it back and putting it about. <laughs> Can't she see that that is all over? Well, she's got to be made to. She's got to realise that you're just a friend now, not my bosom companion. She's my partner in life now. She's the one I'm going out to work for and building a future for and, and giving up all my spare time for. Except Fridays, of course. Well... Yes, except Friday. <laughs> That's always been lads' night. And what about Tuesdays? Tuesdays dart match? Yes, well, Tuesdays darts, isn't it? And midweek football. Well, obviously we'll be going to that together. But she's got the rest, except Sunday lunchtime. <laughs> and that isn't enough, dear me. Huh? They're so demanding, aren't they? Oh, well... Look, you do believe me about last night, don't you? Yeah, sure. You and I could have a swift half later on, seeing as she's having the nervous breakdown. You're on. Shake. Shake. <laughs> it's a game, though, isn't it? Don't tell me, mate. I've been through it all. Everything's such a drama. It certainly wasn't my marriage. Cheers. That's well, another argument, so we can never understand each other. But with her being German and me being English. Well, couldn't she speak any English at all? Oh, she had a few useful phrases, like, where are you going, what time are you coming back, give me some more money, that's all. <laughs> Thelma gets so hysterical. It's your female insecurity, of course. She was like this when I broke it off six months ago. You broke it off? You mean again, after the first time? And there's been once in the middle. <laughs> well, you can hardly blame her for female insecurity, can you? Poor cow! I mean, poor ass. <laughs> You can't know where she is. Now you see it, now you don't. 
It must be like Pavlov's dog. <laughs> like what? Pavlov's dog, you know, they used to ring a bell and take its dinner away. <laughs> I thought Pavlov was a ballerina. <laughs> Very probably she was, but she had this dog who didn't know what was going on. Oh, not as bad as that. I mean, every couple has their ups and downs. I mean, you just got to be cut and dried. People have to be sure in their own minds. Well, why did you break it off the last time? The irreconcilable differences. So how come it's all on again? Well, our name came up on the housing list. <laughs> Oh, now, Bob, Bob, please, look, I've got no axe to grind. I'm not trying to stir things, but that is hardly a basis for marriage, is it? Loving someone, needing them, putting them up the stick, fine. <laughs> but you don't get married because some bloke on the council writes and tells you your numbers come up. It's not as bad. That was the past. There's no doubts now, no uncertainties. I see. So at this moment in time, that little ring, after its many journeys up and down her digit, is firmly in place. <laughs> yes. The bands are being called tomorrow, and all the invitations have gone out. Oh, well, that's it, isn't it? There's no point in discussing it. What were the printer's charges and the cost of an announcement in the Northern Echo? It represents too large an investment. Can't let that go to waste. Look, I've looked into this question of marriage very thoroughly. I'm well aware of the dangers of marrying for the wrong reasons. There's some people around here who get married just so they don't end up spare at the football club Christmas Eve dinner dance. But Thelma and I have been very mature about this. We haven't panicked ourselves into rushing things. True, true. Nineteen years and three engagements. It's hardly impetuous, is it? <laughs> it's not that long. It is. I remember the first day, clearly. Park Junior's 4B. It was me that brought you together, indirectly. Do you remember? Old man Hayward wanted to split us up, so we had a reeve shuffle. He moved her desk next to yours. Oh, no, I lost my place at the radiator. <laughs> That's right. It's ironical, isn't it? The three of us have been reshuffling ever since. You've always been up and down with her. Even then, you were rowing all the time. I remember your first row. She had a little bit of pasta scene kept in a four-square tobacco tin. And one day it disappeared. And she said you'd stole it, and you said you hadn't, and she didn't believe you. Trundled that desk right back across the room, she did. How can you remember all this? It was me that stole her plasticine. <laughs> and you've been coming between us ever since, haven't you? Haven't you? It was you used to spread that rumour about her going on the allotment with Frank Cheevers. It was you that told me her brother had gone to Borstal, and her mother was in the loony bin. <laughs> You've been stealing Thelma's plasticine for 19 years, metaphorically speaking. Meta? You can tell you're marrying a grammar school girl. Yeah, that's when I lost contact with her when she went to the grammar school. When you and I were banished to the blackboard jungle, I became her social inferior. At that school, we were everybody's social inferior. I used to watch her through the railings, skipping. <laughs> her blouse tucked into her thick navy blue knickers. <laughs> Paul Anker put it at the time, so near and yet so far away. <laughs> Billy Fury. Paul Anker. It was Billy Fury. No, it wasn't. Paul Anker. Quit on it. You're on. Halfway to paradise, Billy Fury. I want to be your lover, but your friend is all I'll stay. What I'm does only that half... mean, your friend is all I'll stay? I want to be your lover, but you'll only let me be your friend. <laughs> hey. You two fairies, out. <laughs> Hello, Audrey. Hello, Bob. It is nice to see you. Why your feet, Terry? You got the invitation. I must RSVP as soon as I can get a minute. As soon as I got this bandage off, I'm going to stick one on that fella. I see the reception's at the county. That'll be nice. Oh, I learned a few tricks in the army. How do you feel about the big day, Bob? Nervous? No, 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 no not, not really, no. He's terrified. He's got cold feet. In his case, cold flat feet. <laughs> no, I haven't. I'm looking forward to it, Audrey. Thanks very much. Has he been staring it? He hasn't helped. Well, don't listen to his marriage guidance counsel. I know what it's about. I've been through it all. And I know what it's about. I've been married for five years and I've got two kids and a bad back to show for it. <laughs> but I know marriage isn't a breakfast food commercial. Bob, you've got to work at it. That's the secret. I tried. God knows I tried. Oh, he never, he never lifted a finger to save his marriage. It was madness in being married in the first place. Oh, but you, Bob, you'll make a lovely husband and a smashing father. If only we'd had children. 
Oh, don't let him give you all that about how he suffered. Oh, the heartbreak and the anguish. You want to get him to tell you how his marriage failed, Bob? That'll give you an idea of his anguish. That hurts. More than you will ever know. That hurts. <laughs> he only told me about it yesterday. Audrey, did you ever meet his wife? Once. What was she like? Well, she was a very, uh, physical girl. You mean there was a lot of her? Well, it wasn't so much that there was a lot of her, but what there was, one was made very aware of. <laughs> he always did like bigger girls, Terry. He always was a breast man. <laughs> I mean, as opposed to a leg man or a thigh man. Oh, yes. And what sort of a man are you then, Bob? Oh, I think the face counts. And manners are very important. Yes, the face and manners. And sensitivity and deportment. Mm. And I like big knockers and all. <laughs> You're the same, you lot. Your loins rule your head. Well, it is very important in marriage, Audrey, the physical side. I wouldn't be marrying Thelma if we weren't... Well, if we didn't... If we couldn't... <laughs> if we weren't attracted to each other. I wondered why it took you six months to decorate your new house. It needed two undercoats. Aye, and an overcoat and two pillars. <laughs> And a lot of nerve, considering the plasterers are in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, you'll be all right, Bob, you and Thelma. We're always having rows. Well, marriage is a lot of rows with breaks in between to get your breath back. But you'll last the distance. You're happy, aren't you all? Well, I suppose so. Ernie and I don't have so many rows since I've taken up yoga. I mean, when he picks a fight with me now, I just sit in the lotus position with a serene smile on my face. Drives him mad. <laughs> Ta. Terry, what? How did your marriage end? Irreconcilable differences. No, I mean, was it having rows or another fella or, or what? I mean, what was the last straw, as it were? It all built to a climax in June 1970. June the 14th it was, 9.30 local time. <laughs> I had a weekend pass, so I was spending the weekend with her family. They were all there, her mother and father, uncles and brothers, all sitting round the telly after dinner, full of veal and sauerkraut and popping their cans of Dortmund of beer. <laughs> and then it happened. The thing that snapped the final thread of our chance of happiness together. What happened? What happened? On June the 14th, 1970, I would have thought that that date was indelibly printed on every true Englishman's mind. England 2, West Germany 3. That's what happened. <laughs> oh, God, I, of course. Have you any idea what it was like to be in Germany that night, West Germany? Especially after being two up. I mean, after the second, I was out of my mind. I was on the sideboard singing Rule Britannia. <laughs> and then the shame. Humiliation. And there, them all leaping up and down, their eyes glazed with national fervour. I thought they were going to invade Poland again. <laughs> don't, don't. I've only just learned to live with it myself. Well, you can imagine what it was like for me. I just got up, went quite unnoticed, got me bag, and walked out of her life forever. Well, I think I would have done the same. It was bad enough here. I can't say I blame you, mate. I had to go to bed and lie down. <laughs> Two weeks. So that was that. Takes a long time to get over something like that. Of course it does. You can't just shrug it off and forget it. Back to square one and start again. Pick up the pieces. Start afresh. Mind you, I think Chivers has made a difference. <laughs> Do you want me to come over? Well, it's up to you. I didn't say that. Do you want me to come over? Oh. You don't want me to come over? <laughs> I do, I do. That's why I offered to. God preserve us. <laughs> I only said I'd, I... I only said that in case you didn't want me to. But I want to. That's why I offered to. <laughs> well, I didn't just come round in case you didn't want to see me or you were lying down. 
Or having one of your migraines. <laughs> I didn't say one of your migraines. I said one of your migraines. Love is a madness. <laughs> no, no, it's uh, I'm not with Terry it's Sweet. The April it's the wireless. Rose <laughs> I'm round with Audrey. I'm just having tea with in Audrey. The early spring. No, she can't talk to you at the moment. Uh, she's in the lotus position. <laughs> Hang on a minute. I'll, I'll just turn the sounds down, Ted. Will you stop your stirring? <laughs> That's better, Thelma. Thelma? Oh. She rung off? Yes, she has. She's rung off. Uh, Thanks to you, she's rung off. Just as well. There's no end to conversations like that. So are you? Am I what? Going over. Are you going over? You're not going over. You're not going over, because if you did go over, you might wish you hadn't gone over. Oh, <laughs> shut your face, Terry. Oh, I do wish you'd come down from there. It can't do you any good, you know, all that yoga. You'll do yourself a permanent injury. Is she still upset, Bob? Hmm. She doesn't want me to go over. <laughs> <laughs> she stopped work on that cardigan she was knitting me. Oh, down needles, has she? Terry. <laughs> it's a fawn one for weekends. I hate people who wear cardigans. Oh, like your father, I suppose, and your granddad and all your uncles, because they all wear cardigans. Not that sort of cardigan. Your sort, the sort Thelma will be knitting you. All wiggly, chunky wool, and beige, and fawn, and rugby clubs, and Sunday morning open-air drinks, and barbecues, and copper spaniels, and gin and tonics, and cross and black wools. Oh, he's the original <laughs> angry young man, isn't he? Except he's about ten years out of date, like his hair and his shoes. What is that supposed to mean? You're a knocker. Terry Collier, the alternative voice. Yeah, except people like him don't offer an alternative. They're just against things, everything. <laughs> Not just other people's cardigans. I am against the things that threaten my liberty. I don't want to be submerged. I don't want to be suffocated by society, by conventions, by... by... Marriage. Go on, say it. That's what all this is leading up to. Pardon? Marriage. You know, this blessed union, holy wedlock. This is just another of your not very subtle attempts to kick me in the matrimonial groin. All I am trying to do is warn friends, very close friends, about rushing into things which I have learned through bitter experience to think twice about. I know all about holy wedlock. Holy necklock. Do you submit? Do you submit? <laughs> yes, well, your marriage might have been like that, a match paid for points, but my marriage is going to be a thing of joy oh. and great beauty. Oh. No wonder yours never got off the ground. There's too much meanness inside you. Absolutely. Too much aggression and hostility. Absolutely. No wonder your marriage failed on the strength of a late Gerd Muller goal. I tried. <laughs> God knows I tried. Oh. Oh, do you think that was a... I should have said that, should I? Do you think that was a bit unkind? Oh, don't fret on his behalf, Bob. He's only gone out to get the chocolate biscuits. Oh. I do <laughs> worry, though, you know, Audrey. I do worry. I mean, look at all the friends we know that have split up. Mm. Oh, we, we all left school together. We all had engagements together, all had 21st together. Now everyone's separating. Mm. I mean, I'm just getting it together, and all my contemporaries are getting it apart. Well, don't count our Terry. Oh, I don't mean him. I mean all sorts of people. Even the Sandersons have split up. Mm. Never! True. I'm surprised they could find the energy. Their marriage was as dull as it was Sunday. Their divorce wasn't. <coughs> Frank Clark's left home, ran off with a nushrep from the Regal. He always carried a torch for her. <laughs> I nearly left Ernie a few years ago, but I couldn't find the time. Tony and Ord. <laughs> Tony and Ord, Doug and Glennis. What happened there? They all went on a cruise together. And that was a finish? Yep, now it's Doug and Ord, Tony and Glennis. <laughs> <laughs> and you're having your bands read tomorrow with all these warning lights flashing round you? Yeah, I'd better be off and all. I'm supposed to be seeing the Reverend Gordon about the details. Gordon? The Gordon? I thought the vicar's name was Newman. Oh, didn't you hear? He left his wife. <laughs> <laughs> the vicar and all? There's nothing sacred? Yeah, it was in all the local papers. Mm -hmm. He ran off with a petrol pump attendant. <laughs> he left a wife, three kids, and 21 books of Green Shield stamps from his courtship. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the tea, Audrey. I hope everything goes all right tomorrow, Bob. Uh -huh. I see you in church. What? You what? You're not coming, are you? Well, I thought I'd pop round. Earrings believing. What for? I don't want you there. You're up to something, aren't you? You're not going to come up with any just impediments, are you? Just depends. <laughs> Does uh, Frank Cheevers on the allotment come under that? 
You cock things up for me tomorrow, mate. I'll smash you out of bad hand and no bad hand. <laughs> Let's put the wind up his bands. What did you go to church for? Can you remember the last time you were in church? Aye, clearly. There was this fella splashing water all over my head. Can't <laughs> you? No worry. There's only one reason I want to hear those bands read. What? All the time I've known Bob, there's something he would never tell me. And tomorrow I'll find out. What? His middle name. <laughs> I've always known it was Robert Andrew S. Ferris. But I've never known what that S stood for. And he's never told me, so it must be something ludicrous. I didn't know that. He hushed it up. Ooh. Even on his satchel and his pencil case, he only ever put R-A-F. He's always hushed that S up. I wonder what it could mean. Oh, that's bound to be something to do with the war, a battle or a general, or even a film star. Mm. S? Mm. S. Robert Andrew... Stalin Ferris? <laughs> oh, no, no, his dad wouldn't even join the Union. <laughs> Robert Andrew Sands of Iwo Jima Ferris. <laughs> didn't even get overseas. Robert Andrew Shirley Temple Ferris. Round under that people we beseech thee, O Lord, to avoid every contamination of the devil, and with pure minds to follow thee, the only God through our Lord. Bob. Bob. What? What is the matter? Nothing. Not able to please thee. Nothing. Through our Lord. Well, pray. We will now sing hymn number 160, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Hey. You're some colliers, lad, aren't you? Young Terry, is it? Not as young as I used to be. How are you, then? Fine. Fine. <laughs> uh, they told me you were at services. Aye, I was. They've uh, kicked off in there, have they? About half an hour ago. You're not going in there, though. Certainly I am. Well, God moves in a mysterious way. It's wonders to perform. <laughs> hey, listen to that. I remember that one. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. That was it in my day. Hey. Did you hear about Reverend Newman? He loses his pension, you know. Yes, yes, yes. Look, I'd better get him. I don't want to miss the sermon. So find a seat up back. You're doing good business, are you? Aye, champion. See you then. Who wants seats? Who wants seats? <laughs> <laughs> On Tuesday, Sister Elizabeth Hayes will be giving a talk on her work in Tehran with the Voluntary Service Overseas. And on Saturday, of course, it's our jumble sale. The church hall will remain open all day Friday for those of you who want to leave some jumble. <laughs> and then on Friday evening, Mrs. Ponchon will be giving an illustrated lecture on birds of the Farne Islands. And afterwards, there will be coffee and 20 questions in the Scout Hall. It's going to be quite a week. <laughs> I published the bands of marriage between Judith Mary Caldicott, spinster of this parish, and David St. John Pierce, bachelor of the Paris of Christ Church, Hurley. <laughs> this is for the second time of asking, and between Thelma Ingrid Chambers, spinster of this parish, and Robert Andrew Scarborough Ferris, <laughs> This is for the first time of asking. If any of you know cause or just impediment why these persons should not be joined together. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> Can we get the bandage off of you? Yes. Aye, me and all. Well, the deed's done, the bands are red. Countdown's commenced. Ten, nine, eight, Very seven. Very witty. How's Thelma? Thelma is not speaking to me. <laughs> God preserve us. Now what? Now what? You reduced that service in that church yesterday to a shambles. You made that service a laughingstock. 
Thelma said she's never been so embarrassed. Well, don't blame me, mate. Don't blame me. Blame your parents. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why Scarborough? <laughs> that was where... <laughs> that was... <laughs> they told me once that that was where I was... <laughs> where I was... <laughs> conceived. <laughs> Get away. <laughs> yes. And they could work it out that precisely? Apparently, apparently. <laughs> Did they only have it off on summer holidays, then? <laughs> My father was stationed there at the end of the war. They called me that out of... out of... sentiments. Oh, I see. It's a good job he wasn't stationed in Barrow and Furnace. <laughs> I've never used it, and I never will, so let's forget it, shall we? Nobody knows about it. Except that congregation. Yeah, well, they're not the kind of people to rush into the streets shouting it abroad, are they? My lips are sealed, Robert Andrew. Good. Good. And, uh, Thelma, are our lips still sealed, then? Any chance of her breaking the angry silence before the service? Or will she go through it nodding her head and using the deaf and dumb language? <laughs> we just had a little row, that's all. Nothing serious, nothing I can't handle. Nothing you won't get used to. I'm going through with it, you know. Oh, no, I know. Don't tell me, mate. I've known since 4B. Your fate with her was sealed before you're 11 plus. One of the things about the last few days is give me a chance to iron out any last-minute doubts. I'm grateful to you. You've given me a chance to re-examine. Well, I have. I've re-examined. I've reappraised. And now I'm reassured. Good, good, good. I'm glad to hear it, because now is the time to have doubts. Not when she's galloping up that aisle. When the vicar says you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife, you can't say not necessarily. <laughs> My mind is made up. I may have had a few little doubts, but that was just cold feet. I know in my heart of hearts that Thelma is the girl for me. I know what I want, and I know who I want. She's the one. Always has been. Always will be. Of that, I'm certain. I think. 